Hey, good morning again. This is Ben with Studio on the Lake. This is uh, part two of the Cuckoo Clock build. And uh, as usual, it started out with some, some basswood. I, I ripped them on the bandsaw for the side pieces. I'm not that concerned about them being the same thickness. And, and I didn't show you how to build this box. I mean, you, if you could build a, uh, you're watching this. I did say it was intermediate, so you know how to build a box. These two pieces on the side, uh, left and right, are going to represent at some point branches of a tree kind of going down, and they'll they'll be a cross piece across the bottom there. I did glue these on with with five minute epoxy, and I, I hit them with the brad nailer you know, just to hold them in place because I'm impatient and I want to wait. It says five minute epoxy, but in reality it's about 30 minutes before you can start working it. So there you have it. There's the uh, rough frame out on the front. I wanted to round those over, and I thought the quickest way to knock the edge off of that was to grab that DeWalt. Again, I said before, if you're not used to using this kind of machinery and understanding how it grabs and that sort of thing, I wouldn't recommend it. I certainly wouldn't think you should take the guard off it like I did there. But I, that's just a quick round over. I, I was really careful not to, to tag the clock face there, the circle, the dial. But I, I just wanted to get a quick round over. It takes, as you can see, this is real time, about a minute to get this close to where I want it. Later on in the video, you'll see me uh, contour these down a little bit more, make it look like uh, a little bit more like bark. So, we've got it all uh, kind of roughed out in the front there, ready to go. This is kind of interesting. I, I thought I'd run this on a 45. Well, guess what? The, the, the top is not a 45, so the square really didn't do me any good. I put the 45 on there, and it's whacker jawed, so I just adjust it. Th these are a couple of reference lines that I'm throwing in. And I, I throw one in towards the top and one in towards the bottom. Again, not scientific. It's going to be a diamond pattern when I get done messing around here. And now you get to watch the pain of, of me uh, drawing in a diamond pattern across the complete face of that thing. not trying to be perfect here uh, if I were I'd have to carve it a lot more carefully than I am I'm going to uh, these diamonds uh, when you, you'll see when they're all done they they do read pretty well uh, for what they are you can be a lot more precise than I am on this if I'm doing a big uh, three foot long fish uh, for a wall hanging or something like that I, I'm a little more conscious of making sure each diamond uh, makes sense where it goes. <coughs> That's what the whole face is going to look like. So we go into high speed motion here. Uh, I didn't put in the speeds on these. Uh, I think you can probably tell. I, I tip to typically edit and put in a small section of uh, real time where you can see what I'm up to, and then, then I go ridiculous. I think this was uh, four times. I typically use three to four times the speed on that. Uh, anything other than that. Two is too tedious, three is about right, and four is about as high as you want to go. You get up into five and six times and it starts to get uh, choppy, and it doesn't typically make sense. You can see some of my lines are going off a little bit there. I'll have a chance to correct this a little bit later. I'm going to come back and, and put stop cut lines in there with the, the wood burner, as you've seen before. Down on the bottom of that clock, it's going to get a cross piece in there, and that's really where a lot of the carving on the birds and that sort of thing is going to go. And up on those two uprights, left and right, uh, will at some point will be some design elements, uh, birds or whatever. Right now, I'm, I'm thinking uh, a couple of hummingbirds on there, a couple birds in a nest, that sort of thing. But uh, we'll see what happens.
And here, here's an example of uh, what I was talking about. Uh, that is burning in real time. Those lines will all go away. And I, I got a second opportunity to correct my bad pencil layout lines. And you can see I'm only doing a section of that. That's just the way the angle of the pen goes in there. If a guy was a little bit smarter, I think, uh, than I am, you would have carved this face before you put those two uprights on the left and the right side of that damn thing. Uh, I, of course, didn't do that. Hey, I lied. I did put the speed in there. It's kind of interesting, uh, a lot of the folks that uh, I follow and, and uh, we, we're kind of getting a little carving community thing going. And Jordy over there at uh, Carving Fusion, Just Carve Rob, and Just Carve Rob said uh, he hadn't seen anything that I'd done for quite a while after the Troll King. And a lot of that has to do, uh, heck, I, I looked, went back looked it up, it seemed like a long time, but it was, it was only a week. Um, just Carve Rob has been cranking out videos like nobody's business. Jesse, of course, does the same. Uh, I'm not that fast, I guess. Um, plus, it, it is it, spring now. The, we're trying to put a greenhouse together out in the, the garden. Uh, I tend to carve on those days when it's too cold or, God forbid, here in upper Wisconsin, it's snowing again in the spring. Uh, so there's uh, all these projects the snow melted and stuff was that you haven't seen since last fall is laying outside in the snow and you just kind of got the urge to clean that stuff up so I've got more than enough projects I need to get back to working on the sawmill uh, I've got a couple of buildings to build out at the woodlot and of course the whole garden to get planted once you get the garden planted then it can kind of take care of itself with exception of uh, the weeding and that sort of thing. I think I've said before, we had, uh, I, I've got a eight or nine, 10 foot fence that goes around the garden uh, and has deer netting across the top. Uh, last fall, a bear decided that he, he wanted to eat some bees and he went in there on my beehives and busted down a six inch post uh, to stick it in the ground and busted one or two of them down by climbing over the fence. And as a consequence, the deer then came in and decided to munch down the apple trees. I don't have to trim apple trees apparently or keep them pruned because the deer seem, tend to do that for me. But uh, that's getting rebuilt this summer and turns out to be 30 or 40 posts. All of them got to be sunk into the ground and then you got to go back around and put the rabbit netting on the bottom, the deer netting on the top. It's a pain in the butt and in addition to building the greenhouse. We also, uh, my daughter wanted some ducks this year. So she's, we built, took a, a week and built a duck pen, built it correctly. You could turn it into a guest house if, when you were done, once you got the smell of the ducks to go away. And then we built a big pen. And of course we critter proof that all the way down to weasels. Everything under the sun is here in uh, Wisconsin and would love to make a meal of those ducks. They've been cranking out their year old and Kona ducks. We ended up with six. And it seemed, they seem to be laying five and six duck eggs a day. If you've never looked at a duck egg, they're a, a, a lot larger than a chicken egg. Excellent for baking, a little bit richer. But uh, your average large or extra large chicken egg is about uh, 55 grams. And these duck eggs are averaging 80 to 90 grams a piece. So basically, three chicken eggs equals two duck eggs so you can, you can see how many duck eggs we're cranking out I 
I went over with that with a, a, a cut saw, aggressive, kind of an aggressive uh, flame tip and, and put those diamonds in. And now I'm coming back with the ruby bit. And this is uh, just kind of tedious. I, I enjoy it, it's relaxing, cutting each piece across there. You can see how that pattern is starting to take shape. It looks kind of ratty right now, but it'll, it'll all get cleaned up in there. And once again, if the guy was smarter, he'd have done this before he put the, the face on there and you wouldn't be working with these weird angles where I, I have to uh, come in from one side and then turn this thing around and come in from the other side. I've switched to a ball, a diamond bit, and what I'm doing at this point is I'm rounding over the corners a little bit uh, down into the pocket, making that more of a button on that. And this is just the preliminary. I'm, I'm not gonna film uh, the whole Megillah for you guys that drive you insane. But this will give you an idea. It's starting to take shape on the faceplate of this thing. If you go back and take a look at some of the other videos, uh, there's a couple of them where I, I did a studio tour there. Uh, the upper left hand straight, and straight facing away from me is a, a television up in the corner. and I, I typically run Netflix or Hulu or something on that. And I pick a mindless program that can kind of sit there in the background. So, and the it is cold outside. You can see the corner of the pot-bellied stove behind that there, and that's sitting there. And it's, uh, I also have got windows that look out over the lake, so it's kind of nice, uh, nice and relaxing. You'll notice that uh, I switch back and forth on various different things. I, I bring the relief out just a little bit more on occasion, but I, I won't quite finish anything. At one point, I, I continue to work it in the round.
right, I've, sw I've sw switched back to the um, a, a pretty aggressive cuts all. And I'm kind of contouring. This, these are supposed to be a tree uh, and bark going up the side, so I'm just putting some layout lines in there that won't get finished until I get to the end. This just gives you an idea of, of how I, I go about starting this sort of stuff. First, I'll lay in the uh, basic lines of where I think bark would be in there, and I'll come back and refine that. You'll see a little bit of that. Getting uh, near the end of uh, this first or second video on that, I just was amusing myself and divided the face up where the the numbers on the clock face will go. Haven't decided if I'm going to carve them or uh, I, I, I've given some thought to pulling out some old ivory keyboards uh, off a piano that I had or have and. Uh, actually getting out the scroll saw and the rest of that stuff and showing you some detail work on how to cut those out. Uh, kind of a pain in the butt. I may or may not do that. I may carve those. Uh, you'll have to follow the future videos. So for amusement, I, I knew I was getting pretty close to the, the end of, of this carving session and I wanted to see what it looked like on the face. This is not necessarily what's going to be there. But I think I probably will go with Roman, Roman numerals. And this just gives you an idea of, of how it might look. That, that marker is easier for you guys to see what's going on and, and prove that this thing really is a clock. That will get sanded off, obviously, when I finish uh, the contouring of the dial. But I, I just kind of found it kind of neat that it's turning into a clock when you put the the numbers on the, the face of the thing. got one too many in there 11 doesn't have that many so the best way just scratch it out no one will notice well that's about the end of it uh, end of part two uh, subscribe like comment to see the rest of it and by all means check out these other carvers that are doing their thing hey thanks a lot this has been uh, Ben with studio on the lake